Dear friends, I am Dr. K. Kannan, Professor of Mechanical Engineering, Anjalayamal Mahalingam Engineering College, Koyil Vanni. I am happy to meet you again in the video lecture in the solution and discussion on UPSC Engineering Series preliminary, preliminary exam question paper in the topic heat exchanger. The first question, in a concentric double pipe heat exchanger where one, one of the fluid undergoes phase change. The options are, the two fluids should flow in the opposite to each other, the two fluids should flow parallel to each other, the two fluids should flow normal to each other, the direction of the flow of the two fluids are no consequences. The correct option is, the direction of the flow of the two fluid are of no consequences when one of the fluid undergoes phase change. So, you will see how in the next slide, there are two types of heat exchanger where the phase change is occurring. One is boiling, another one is condensation. So, the evaporation and boiling heat transfer, the temperature profile uh, for the two fluids in the boiling heat transfer, it is shown here. So, the boiling fluid, it is of constant temperature. The hot fluid, which is supply heat energy for the boiling, it is, there is a temperature decrease for the hot fluid, preferably for, in the case of boiler, the hot gases. So, the boiling fluid, water is converted into vapor. So, the temperature of the water and the vapor is constant. The gas temperature decreases. And here, you take the condensing fluid, condenser of the boiler plant once again. So, the condenser, the vapor is being condensed into water. So, the vapor is converted into liquid state. So, the cold fluid which absorbs the heat energy, the temperature of the cold fluid increases. So, the for the phase change, when the phase change takes place, the direction of the flow does not have any meaning. So, it can be in either direction. Next question, there are two statements. Statement 1, a counter flow heat exchanger is more effective than a parallel flow heat exchanger. Statement 2, for the same temperature limits of hot and the cold fluid, the overall heat transfer coefficient of a counter flow heat exchanger is more than parallel flow heat exchanger. Select the answers using the code given below. Option A, both the statement 1 and 2 are individually true and the statement 2 is the correct explanation for the statement 1. Second option, both the statement 1 and 2 are individually true, but the statement 2 is not the correct explanation for the statement 1. Statement 1 is true, but the statement 2 is false. Option D, statement 1 is false, but the statement 2 is true. The correct answer is option B. So, both the statements are individually true. A counter flow heat exchanger is more effective than a parallel flow heat exchanger. That is true. For the same temperature limit of hot and the cold fluid, the overall heat transfer coefficient of a counter flow heat exchanger is more than a parallel flow heat exchanger. That is also true. So, the two statements are individually correct, but the statement 2 is not the correct explanation of the statement 1. Option B is the correct answer. Next question, a counter flow shell and tube heat exchanger is used to heat water with hot gases. The water of specific heat 4180 joules per kilogram Kelvin flows at a rate of 2 kilograms per second and the exhaust gases of specific heat 1000 joules per kilogram Kelvin flows at a rate of 5 kilograms per second. If the heat transfer surface area is 32 meter square and the overall heat transfer coefficient is 200 watts per meter square Kelvin, the NTU of the heat exchanger, number of transfer unit of the heat exchanger, there are four options given, 4.5, 2.4, 8.6 and 1.28. The correct answer is 1.28. So, we will see how in the next slide. So, these are all the data given, mass of the cold fluid 2 kilogram per second, specific heat of the cold fluid 4180. Mass of the hot fluid 5 kilograms per second, specific heat of the hot fluid 1000, overall heat transfer coefficient 200 watts per meter square Kelvin and the area is 32 meter square. We have to calculate the heat capacity of the two fluid. Heat capacity of the cold fluid Cc equal to Mc into Cpc 2 into 4180, 8360 watts per Kelvin and heat capacity of the hot fluid Ch equal to Mh Cph. So, 5 into 1000 equal to 5000 watts per meter, watts per Kelvin. Number of transfer unit, N2 equal to Ua by C minimum. So, substituting the values 200 into 32 divided by 5000 equal to 1.28. That is the answer to the question. 
The next question, in a two fluid heat exchanger, the inlet and the outlet temperatures of the hot fluid are 40, 65 degrees Celsius and 40 degrees Celsius respectively. For the cold fluid, these are 15 degrees Celsius and 43 degrees Celsius. The heat exchanger is a parallel flow heat exchanger, counter flow heat exchanger, mixed flow heat exchanger, phase change heat exchanger. The correct answer is counter flow heat exchanger. So, we will see how in the next slide. So, the hot fluid inlet temperature 65 degrees Celsius, hot fluid outlet temperature 40 degrees Celsius, TCI cold fluid inlet temperature 15 degrees Celsius, cold fluid outlet temperature 43 degrees Celsius. The temperature profile for both the hot and the parallel flow and counter flow they are shown here. For parallel flow, the cold fluid and hot fluid both are entering in the same side and leaving on the other side, they flow in the same direction. Cold fluid inlet temperature is low and it increases to TCO. Hot fluid inlet temperature is high, it is decreasing and leaves a THO. Similarly, in the counter flow heat exchanger, hot fluid is entering in the left side, flowing in the towards the right side, leaving a THO. Cold fluid enters on the right side, flows in the left side direction and leaves a temperature TCO. So, in this example, TCO is greater than THO. So, TC, when TCO is greater than THO, so look at TCO here, THO here. So, in the parallel flow heat exchanger, TCO, THO both are in the same side. So, when TCO is greater than THO, the heat exchanger, parallel flow heat exchanger is not at all possible and the answer is counter flow heat exchanger. When the cold fluid outlet temperature is greater than hot fluid outlet, outlet temperature, the possible heat exchanger arrangement is counter flow heat exchanger. The next question, in a double pipe heat exchanger, the cold fluid is water with inlet temperature of 20 degree Celsius and mass flow rate of 20 kilogram per second and the hot fluid is water inlet temperature of 80 degree Celsius with mass flow rate of 10 kilograms per second. Assumes that specific heat of water 4.2 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin independent of the temperature. What is the maximum temperature to which the cold fluid can be heated in parallel flow and in counter flow heat exchanger? So, 80 degree Celsius in both parallel flow and counter flow, 50 degree Celsius in both parallel flow and counter flow, 40 degree Celsius in parallel flow and 50 degree Celsius in the counter flow, 40 degree Celsius in the parallel flow and 80 degree Celsius in the counter flow. The correct answer is option C, 40 degree Celsius in the parallel flow and 50 degree Celsius in the counter flow. So, we will see how in the next slide. So, this is for parallel flow arrangement. Mc equal to 20 kilograms per second, TCI equal to 20 degree Celsius, MH equal to 10 kilograms per second, THI equal to 80 degree Celsius. For parallel flow heat exchanger, the heat gained by the cold fluid is equal to heat lost by the hot fluid, substituting Mc, Cc, TCO minus TCI equal to MH, CH, THI minus THO. So, Cc, specific heat of both water is the same, that is, that is cancelled. So, Mc is 20 multiplied by TCO minus 20 equal to MH equal to 10, THA is 80 minus THO. So, take TCO equal to THO, that is T. So, calculating TCO equal to 40 degree Celsius. So, the cold fluid outlet temperature is 40 degree Celsius in the case of parallel flow heat exchanger. And similarly for counter flow arrangement, the same formula, heat gained by the cold fluid is equal to heat lost by the hot fluid. So, 20 into TCO minus TCI, so 20, TCO is the unknown minus 20 equal to 10 into THI minus THO, 80 minus THO. So, we take TH, TCI equal to THO equal to 20 degree Celsius. So, that is given in the problem. So, TCO minus 20 equal to 30, so TCO equal to 50 degree Celsius, that is the answer to the problem. So, in the case of counter flow heat exchanger, TCO equal to 50 degree Celsius. In the case of parallel flow heat exchanger, TCO equal to 40 degree Celsius. Then next problem, a counter flow shell and tube heat exchanger having an area of 32.5 meter square is used to heat water with hot gases. This for water, specific heat is 4.16 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin and the flow rate is 2 kilograms per second. While the exhaust gases of CP 1.03 kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, flow rate is at a rate of 5.15 kilograms per second. The, if the overall heat transfer coefficient is 200 watts per meter square Kelvin, the NTU of the heat exchanger is 1.2, 2.4, 3.6 and 4.8. 
the answer is 1.2. So, we will see how in the next slide. So, here is the answer. So, mass of the cold fluid 2 kilograms per second, specific heat of the cold fluid 4.16, mass of the hot fluid 5.15 kilograms per second, specific heat of the hot fluid is 1.03 joules per kilogram Kelvin, overall heat transfer coefficient 200 watts per meter square Kelvin, area of the heat exchanger is 32.5 meter square. We have to calculate the heat capacity of the cold and the hot fluid. So, heat capacity of the cold fluid Cc equal to Mc into Cpc which is 2 into 4160 equal to 8320 watts per Kelvin and heat capacity of the hot fluid Ch equal to MHCH CPH which is 5.15 into 1030, 5304.5 watts per Kelvin. So, number of transfer unit N2E equal to Ua by C minimum which is 200 into 32.5 divided by 5304.5 equal to 1.22. It is the answer. Number of transfer unit equal to 1.22. Next question, hot gases enter a heat exchanger at 200 degrees Celsius and leaves at 150 degrees Celsius. The cold air enters at 40 degrees Celsius and leaves at 140 degrees Celsius. The capacity ratio of the heat exchanger will be 0 0.4, 0 0.45, 0 0.50, 0 0.52. So, we calculate the for heat exchanger MCCC TCO minus TCI that is the heat gained by the cold fluid is equal to heat lost by the hot fluid MHCH and THI minus THO. Substituting the parameter CC multiplied by 140 minus 40 equal to CH multiplied by 200 minus 150. So, CC into 100 equal to CH into 50. So, C minimum by C maximum. So, C minimum by C maximum equal to CC by CH. So, which is equal to 50 by 100 equal to 0 0.5. The capacity ratio is 0 0.5. The next question, a cross flow type of air heater has an area of 50 meter square. The overall heat transfer coefficient is 100 watts per meter square Kelvin and the heat capacity of steam be it cold or hot, hot or cold. So, the heat capacity of the steam which is which may be heat, uh, hot fluid or the cold fluid is 1000 watts per Kelvin. What is the NTU? 500, 50, 5 and 0 0.5. So, we calculate the NTU, area of the heat exchanger is 50, 50 meter square, overall heat transfer coefficient U equal to 100 watts per meter square Kelvin and the minimum heat capacity C minimum equal to 1000 watts per Kelvin. So, number of transfer unit NTU equal to UEA by C minimum 100 into 50 divided by 1000 equal to 5. So, 5 is the correct answer, the NTU is 5. Next question, the effectiveness of counterflow heat exchanger has been estimated as 0 0.25. Hot gases enters at 20 degrees Celsius and leaves at 75 degrees Celsius. Cooling air enters at 40 degrees Celsius. The temperature of the air leaving the unit will be 60 degrees Celsius, 70 degrees Celsius, 80 degrees Celsius and 90 degrees Celsius. So, we calculate the uh, TCO, uh, the air outlet temperature. So, the de definition for effectiveness of heat exchanger epsilon equal to TCO minus TCI divided by maximum temperature difference. Temperature difference of the cold fluid divided by maximum temperature difference in the heat exchanger. So, TCO minus TCI is the temperature difference of the cold fluid. THI minus TCI is the maximum temperature difference in the heat exchanger. So, epsilon is given as 0 0.25. Substituting numerical values TCO is the unknown. TCI is cold fluid inlet temperature, air inlet temperature is 40 degrees Celsius, THI equal to 200 degrees Celsius. So, TCO minus 40 divided by 200 minus 40. So, calculating, so cross multiplying and calculating TCO equal to 40 plus 0 0.25 into 160 equal to 80 degrees Celsius. So, the answer is 80 degrees Celsius. Next question. In a counterflow heat exchanger, hot gases enter the system at 200 degrees Celsius and leaves at 80 degrees Celsius. The temperature of the outside air entering is 35 degrees Celsius. If uh, its temperature at the exit is 90 degrees Celsius, the heat exchanger effectiveness can be so 0 0.75, 0 0.74, 0 0.73, and 0 0.72. So 0 0.73 is the correct answer. So we will see how in the next slide. So here, what are the, the answers uh, given? Data THI equal to 200 degrees Celsius, THO equal to 80 degrees Celsius, TCI equal to 35 degrees Celsius, TCO equal to 90 degrees Celsius. So, calculating uh, for a heat exchanger, 
the heat loss heat gained by the uh, cold fluid is equal to heat loss by the hot fluid mc cc tco minus tci equal to mh ch thi minus tho so mc cc equal to heat capacity capital cc 90 minus 35 equal to mh cph equal to ch so this heat capacity of the hot fluid to my into 200 minus 80 so it is cc into 55 equal to CH into 120. So, the C minimum is CH. So, comparing the value, so C minimum is CH. Now, effectiveness of heat exchanger, epsilon equal to CH THO minus THI divided by C minimum THI minus TCI. So, CH is equal to C minimum that is getting cancelled. So, the effectiveness equal to THO minus THI divided by THI minus TCI. THI minus TCI is the maximum temperature difference. So, substituting 200 minus 80 divided by 200 minus 35 equal to 0 0.727. So, the heat exchanger effectiveness equal to 0 0.727. The next question, in a heat exchanger, 50 kg of water is heated per minute from 50 degree Celsius to 110 degree Celsius by hot gases which enters the heat exchanger at 250 degree Celsius. The value of Cp of water specific heat of water is 4.186 kilojoules per kilogram kelvin and for air 1 kilojoules per kilogram kelvin. If the flow rate of gas is equal to 100 kilograms per minute, the net change of enthalpy of the gas will be nearly 17.6 megajoules per minute, 15 megajoules per minute, 12.6 megajoules per minute, 10 megajoules per minute. So, we calculate heat loss by the gases equal to heat gained by the water. So, Q equal to MC CPC into TCO minus TCI. So, we are given the cold fluid pro properties. So, Q equal to 50 into 4.186 into 110 minus 50 equal to 12,558 kilojoules per minute. That is equal to 12.558 megajoules per minute. So, the answer is 12.6 megajoules per minute. So, we stop here. So, these are all the books I have written in mechanical engineering subject and I upload the you video lectures of all the subjects in the YouTube channel. Uh, you can subscribe the channel, use the video lectures for your better preparation. Thank you for watching. Please post your comments. You can contact me uh, through my mail ID or WhatsApp number, any clarification on the subject. So, we will meet again in another video lecture on the solution of UPSC engineering service exam question paper. Until then, bye.